I seriously can't believe it. You. You were deceiving me, huh? Huh? What do you mean by deceiving? About your sister. Why didn't you tell me that she's a high school dropout? Huh? Is that a big deal? There were circumstances. And she couldn't finish high school. Is academic background that important? Of course. My grandpa is the company president. You can't invite an uneducated person to a wedding. Don't you dare invite your uneducated sister. Why not? The guests will include VIPs, obviously. So what? Are you dumb? Just wait till they ask which university she graduated from. She's going to say she's a high school dropout? I think in this day and age, academic background doesn't matter. Having an uneducated family member is seriously embarrassing. Are you planning to embarrass me, huh? Merging someone without a formal education with high-ranking individuals is just plain absurd. My sister is excited about the wedding. It will be fine. She should attend. A sister's wish to attend her sibling's wedding doesn't depend on her academic background. I want my sister to come too. In that case, let's cancel the wedding. Huh? The cancellation fee is absurd. And if we cancel the honeymoon too? Hmm. You can handle that cost, right? Are you saying you're calling off the marriage? Exactly. I won't go through with the registration if there's no wedding. Hold on. I just want my sister to be at the ceremony. I never said I wanted to cancel the entire wedding. Nope. I won't have a wedding if your sister is attending. Why are you taking it so seriously? How about we meet now and discuss this? What? Why? Meeting in person would be a good idea to talk this out. Canceling just five days before the wedding is hard to explain to my parents. Especially with the reasons we have. My parents are on board. I'd go so far as to say my dad even suggested it. What? They said a family member of a high school dropout is absolutely unacceptable. I seriously got deceived by grandpa. I should have declined the matchmaking. Your grandfather is the president of a business partner of mine. He's been really good to me. Don't say it like that. It will be even more heartbreaking for him that it ended this way. Don't make decisions on your own. Judging my sister solely based on her educational background is strange from the start. Even if you care about her education. I'm the one you're marrying. Not her. Do you want to marry me that badly? <laughs> then you know what you should do, even if you're not that smart. Not invite my sister to the wedding? But that's... Now you understand what I'm saying. You only have one option. That's it. I think you should cut ties with your uneducated sister. I can't do that. My sister is my important family. Why can't you grasp that? Oh, fine. Then I guess we'll just have to cancel everything. I'll send you the bill later, and you'll be responsible for covering the cost. Hold on a second. It's not fair to end it with just a text like this. Let's meet and talk about this. I'm Gwen, 23 years old. My fiancé, Harrison, is 5 years older than me at 28 years old. I was so excited before the wedding, but my mood was ruined. I never thought this would happen. And he is a gentleman who is kind to everyone. I can't believe he would break up just because of my sister's academic background. It's just unbelievable. My sister had an accident when she was in high school. She had to stay in the hospital for a long time. However, thanks to the rehabilitation, she is now in good health. She is now studying for the high school equivalency exam. I told him before that I had a younger sister, but I did not tell him that she was a high school dropout. Just the other day, we talked about the accident at my parents' house. And Harrison was very surprised. And then suddenly he called off the wedding. I couldn't accept it. I thought there must be another reason. So I decided to investigate. As a result, I was very surprised by unexpected secrets. You're persistent. Don't call me. You called to cancel the wedding on your own, didn't you? Yes. So what? My relatives ask me, 
Why did we call off the wedding? I don't remember canceling, and I have no intention of canceling it. But you must have some idea why I was the one who called it off. About my sister? See? You know what I'm talking about. Then why don't you just tell everyone what's going on? Just tell them, my sister is uneducated and I'm too embarrassed, so we called off the wedding. I can't say that. Don't judge her based on her education. You never even met my sister. I don't even want to meet her. I might become dumb too if I talk to her. How can you say such a terrible thing like that? My sister didn't become a high school dropout because she wanted to. That wasn't an unfortunate accident. And she was doing her best, okay? It's unfortunate that the culprit hasn't been found, but it's true that she's a high school dropout. If she had at least a high school diploma, that's a different story, but... People who don't have a high level of education feel like society sees them as losers, you know? You can't live in this world. What? How do you know that? What? About what? That the culprit hasn't been found. Your parents told me the other day, right? They said there was an accident, but I don't think they ever mentioned it. Shut up. I heard it when you left the table. Is that true? I don't think they would say that. Anyway, I've already informed my colleagues about the wedding cancellation through email. I guess everybody knows what's going on now. You did? Let me check. You haven't been to work, have you? You skipped work because you were in shock that the wedding was canceled. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm taking a pre-wedding vacation. Oh, that's a waste of vacation time. Why don't you go to work now? Well, if I go, you will be the center of attention. Hey, what the hell is this? Why did you mention I cheated on you? You want to hide your sister's education, don't you? It's my last act of kindness to you. Don't be ridiculous. I can't believe you. I can't believe you would lie like this. How many insults do you have to hurl at me and my sister? Think about it. Imagine a wedding where we're not even there. Just the guests. The VIP guests would feel insulted. It would be bad for my business. If I can take the place of your scumbag sister and an idiot like you, it's a small sacrifice for the greater good. What's a small sacrifice? Don't be ridiculous. Don't do anything on your own when we haven't discussed anything. It's because you're slow in making decisions. This is too much. That's on you. You are a liar. I'm going to charge you alimony as punishment for hurting my life, so remember that. I'm hurt too. I don't know why it turned out this way. Cancellation fees for the wedding, honeymoon, and the emotional distress to me. Roughly $80,000, right? Let's meet and talk. I said we don't need to meet. There's no going back. You don't love me? Huh? What's with you all of a sudden? We decided to get married because we love each other. And now this is the end of it. You won't even talk to me? Huh? What the hell are you talking about? It's an arranged marriage. If we get married, my grandfather said he'd give me a lot of money to celebrate. So I decided to marry you. You said you'd take good care of me and that we'd be happy. Was that a lie? Did I say that? Do you love someone else? Huh? Because, strangely, you would call off a marriage just because of my sister's academic background? Are you having an affair or something? Is there some other reason? Tell me! Don't make me laugh. You are trying too hard. I wouldn't do it timing. I knew it. Anyone with a family member who is uneducated is an idiot. Then you're hiding something, aren't you? You're so persistent. We're done. That's all. Some people are happy about our marriage. Even the president was happy for you. If we break up an arranged marriage like this, doesn't the president feel insulted? Do you want to take that risk and still leave? What's the risk? I don't want to marry a lying woman. That's normal, right? The fact that your sister is a high school dropout is enough reason to break up with you. I'll tell Grandpa about it. You stay out of this. He's my business partner. And I want to talk to him. This is a family matter, and I'm not doing business with you anymore. That's not the same thing. Because it is. I can't work with a company where a trader works. You can't do that. We've known each other for a long time. We have a lot of plans to do business with you. Then you'll be sued by the company. What? Because that's what happens, right? The company is going to lose a big business deal because of an employee's mistake. I'm sure you will have to pay for the damages. 
I didn't make a mistake. Let me put it this way. You knowingly withheld information from me and betrayed me. You broke up the marriage and ended the deal. That's a lot worse than negligence. Oh no. Can you and your family afford that? Your average parents and you, who's likely to get fired, and your high school dropout sister? Holy shit, your family will go downhill. <laughs> so you blame me for everything? Of course I'm blaming you. In fact, it's all your fault. I'll leave the rest to my lawyer then. That's that. I'm so sick of those crazy phone calls. You've got to be kidding me. What do you mean you didn't pay the cancellation fee for the wedding? You're the one who's screwing around. What? Me? I wish I could punch you right now. I don't get it. If you don't have the money, go ask your relatives or something and pay the cancellation fee right away. Listen, if you don't pay me by the end of the day, you'll be in big trouble. Is that how you threaten people? It's good to be rich, isn't it? The rich kid is shamefully ignorant and free from hardship. They talk big, and they can get by with money. They can live on with their lives. You've got to be kidding me. This is defamation. You will have to pay more money to me. And since you tried to trick me into marrying you, it's marriage fraud. Should I call the police? Sure, I'll call the police. What? Let's call them and talk. I want to be clear. Okay? I'll call them now. Oh, wait a minute. Are you stupid? There's no need to make such a big deal about it. Don't take it seriously. Are you scared? Scared you'll get caught? Have you lost your mind? If anyone's going to get arrested, it's you. Why don't you go see a doctor? I don't want to hear that from someone whose life is over. But, sadly, money can't cure stupidity. What part of my life is over? Three years ago, you caused a hit-and-run accident. How could you live with yourself? What's that? Do you have any proof? I heard the culprit always demands evidence. I read that in a book. So I guess it's true. You've got to be kidding me. The victim is my sister. Do you want to frame me as a criminal? No way that's true. Do you have any proof that I ran over your sister? That uneducated bum? If you have proof, show it to me right now. As soon as my parents started to talk about my sister's accident, you wanted to go home early. That night, you called me to break up. There's no point in trying to complicate things. I'm not the culprit. You're not bothered by my sister's level of education. You are afraid my sister might recognize your face. She might find out you are the culprit. That's not possible. I didn't cause the accident. Why are we suddenly talking about this? Because of the statute of limitation expires in three years, my entire family is doing their best to seek justice. Statute of limitations? My sister has been suffering for a long time. My family is frustrated too. You understand that, don't you? Statute of limitations after three years? I didn't know that. I wish I had proof. I mean, he probably got rid of the car three years ago. She still regrets not remembering the number even now. Maybe it was late at night so she couldn't see it. Why would she choose such a deserted street to go home? I mean, there are no security cameras in that old shopping street. I still remember the day she wore the clothes I gave her. She had an accident and was in a wreck. Black clothes are hard to see at night, you know. I see. You know a lot of things, don't you? Huh? You still remember the details of the accidents vividly. Looks like you've had a guilty conscience for the last three years. Maybe you've been spending your time afraid that the police might catch up with you at any moment? I told you I didn't do it. I just heard everything from your dad the other day. I checked with my father and he told me about the accident. But he didn't say anything about a hit and run. Your dad had been drinking, so he must have forgotten what he said. When we talk about hit and run accidents, it mentally distressed my mom. So we never say that word. That doesn't mean I did it. It's just speculation on your part. You want to turn me into the police without any proof. I'll countersue you for defamation. Then tell me, the accident happened at night. 
She was in a hit and run in an old shopping street, and my sister was wearing black. How do you know all this? That's what you just told me. You're the only one who mentioned that. Go back and read the conversation. I didn't say a word. But you started blabbing all the information that only the culprit would know. Oh, I really don't get it. What is this? An interrogation? You're imitating the police? Do you think we are role-playing? What are we, kids? Even kids are taught to apologize when they do something wrong. You've been running around like scum, and you won't get away with it anymore. Huh? You should read what you said. The statute of limitations is three years. I'm not going to be arrested. So you admit you ran her over. Oh, that's so annoying. Then what? Your sister's alive, so it doesn't matter. The statute of limitations is up. You're so dumb. The statute of limitations is three years. We're talking about a claim for damages. What? By the way, it's only been two years and ten months. That's not even the statute of limitations. You really are no better than a kid if you can't calculate dates. Did you just screw me over? I had no idea you were this stupid. Thank you for your honesty. So it's money after all. How much do you want? I'll pay you. What? $10,000? $20,000? Oh, I'll just offset it against the $80,000, and you can just pay me $60,000. Because of you, my sister's life has changed. She couldn't attend high school with her classmates because she was in the hospital. So what? Do you want me to give back the time? No way I can do that. I don't have a time machine. <laughs> don't you have anything to apologize for? Fine. Sorry. Are we done now? So I guess that makes it even. Tell your uneducated sister I said sorry too, okay? My bad that you're stuck being a high school dropout for life just because you walked in front of my car. <laughs> what kind of human being are you? Just the thought of being with you makes me sick. Me too. But now I feel better. I don't have to hide it anymore. Now all you have to do is be honest with the police. I told you I won't get caught. The president is going to talk to the police now. What's the point of my grandpa going to the police? Do you think they won't catch you because there's no physical evidence? That's right. Like you said, there's no evidence. That's just an indictment. It's just a fuss, and that's it. Well, there is. My testimony doesn't mean anything. There's the car from the accident. What? Your father didn't get rid of the car. What? No way. It was a luxury car. He didn't want to get rid of it. He sold it to a dealer. Oh my god. And the funny thing is, the guy who bought it from him was the president. Your grandfather? Why would he do that? Your father would have been the next president of the company. But with you being the problem child that you are, the president wasn't sure what to do with you. But that doesn't mean my grandpa knows anything about it. I don't understand why he would do that. I didn't say I ran over anyone. I told him I ran into a pole. I'm sure Grandpa believed that, too. Yeah. The president didn't know about the hit-and-run story. But it hit him that there was something you were trying to hide. That's why he brought the car instead of fixing it. Damn it, that's unnecessary. So the dots connect in this broken engagement story. And there's evidence. The president is talking to the police about it. Am I under arrest? Of course you are. You hit and run and ruined one person's life. You'll have to talk to the police about the details. They're waiting outside my house right now. What? Jesus. They are here. What should I do? I told you, you can't run away. You're going to be honest with them. Hey, why don't we just get married? Huh? What kind of nonsense are you talking about? I'm not getting married. Fine. You can invite your sister. Let's do that. It's a perfect solution. First of all, you were mad at me because I told you not to invite your sister to the wedding, right? You can invite her now. So please, get in a better mood. Hey, don't ignore my messages. The police are knocking on the door. Help! Harrison! You won't believe what happened. So get this. Harrison was actually arrested for a hit and run incident. Can you imagine? I mean, talk about a major shocker. But wait, it gets even crazier. Turns out, his father was also involved in the whole mess. 
And get this. And get this. He was implicated in the destruction of evidence. Like, seriously? Who does that? Well, you know how rumors spread like wildfire, right? So naturally word got out about Harrison's arrest and all the drama surrounding it. And guess what? The company that Harrison and his father were connected to, their reputation took a serious hit. I mean, people were talking, gossiping, and speculating about the whole situation. It was like a giant scandal. And to get this, the president himself, yes, the big boss, decided to take matters into his own hands. He straight up closed down the entire company. Can you believe it? I mean, that was a pretty drastic move, right? Oh, and it doesn't stop there. His company, the one he was running, actually stopped doing business with my company. Can you imagine the fallout from that? It was a total mess. But wait, there's more. Brace yourself for this bombshell. After Harrison and his father got arrested, the police discovered that they were involved in some unsolved cases from the past. I know, right? It's like something out of a crime thriller. Who would have thought they had such a dark history? I heard whispers and rumors that they might be facing some serious prison time. I mean, it's almost like bad guys were always destined to be bad guys, you know? So naturally, I was furious. I demanded Harrison to make things right. I mean, he had to cancel the wedding, the honeymoon, compensate for the damages caused, and cover various other expenses. And you won't believe the amount I asked for. A whopping $80,000. I mean, that's a lot of dough, right? But guess what? The president stepped in, took charge, and made a lump sum payment to settle everything. Pretty generous, huh? But here's the kicker. Now Harrison stuck with a huge debt. The president made it crystal clear that he's gonna make sure Harrison pays every single penny. Talk about a tough lesson to learn. Oh, and get this. Harrison is actually the president's own grandson. Can you believe it? The president, who has always been so kind to me, turns out he's got this family scandal on his hands. It's like a soap opera or something. I can't help but feel ashamed of myself for not suspecting anything. I mean, how could I have been so blind? On a lighter note, my sister, amidst all this chaos, managed to pass her high school equivalency examination. Can you believe it? It's like a ray of sunshine in this whole dark mess. And you know what? My parents, bless their hearts, they're actually feeling better and brighter now that the culprit has been arrested. It's like a weight has been lifted off their shoulders. You know, honestly, I was totally caught off guard by this entire situation. It hit me like a ton of bricks. But you know what? Now that things are starting to settle down, it feels like a burden that has been lifted off me. I can finally breathe a sigh of relief and move on with my life. Phew.